lower gas and ticket prices. More Americans hitting the road uh, than what we've seen er from earlier this summer. Fueling interest and end of summer travel. Watching the last Grand Slam featuring Serena Williams. <laughs> from a tennis center that bears her name. And FIU is set to kick off the college football season two days early. I've been really impressed with these guys. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak. Hello, South Florida. I'm Paloma Pimentel. I'm Leon Abutarbush. Today is Thursday, September 1st, 2022. Live from the South Florida Media Network's Biscayne Bay Studios in North Miami, this is SFMN Newsbreak. Today is the day they are holding a hearing concerning the FBI raid on former President Trump's South Florida home. Donald Trump and the Department of Justice are set to be in court this afternoon. The hearing will be to decide whether the documents that seized the FBI, that the FBI seized from Trump's home, should be reviewed by a special master. Last night, Trump restated his request for a special master in a filing. In the filing, he acknowledged that some documents that the FBI seized were classified. It's very rarely the original act that gets people in trouble. It's the attempts to, to obstruct or cover up after the fact. The Department of Justice has already gone through the files. The morning, this morning, a former FIU student is facing four charges after an alleged flashing on campus. Michael Huananpe was accused of exposing himself to a student in an empty classroom at MMC. His charges include false imprisonment, lewd, and lascivious behavior, resisting officer without violence to his person in marijuana possession. He was bailed out with 6,000 standard bond. Inflation seems to be letting up just a little, and it's just in time for Labor Day weekend. As the network's Catherine Miranda reports, many are planning to end their summer on the road. It's the unofficial end of summer, and this holiday weekend, the number of Americans heading out of town is expected to climb as gas prices decline. There likely will be more Americans hitting the road uh, than what we've seen er from earlier this summer. According to AAA, domestic bookings for car, air, cruise, hotel, and tours for Labor Day weekend are up 22% compared to last year with car rental rates up almost 32% compared to 2020. Experts say gas prices have fallen significantly from their summer peak, fueling demand for end of summer road trips. This is uh, the lowest we've seen prices in many months. So with summer rapidly closing, it likely will mean more Americans will be hitting the road for Labor Day than we otherwise would have seen if prices remained high. Patrick Dehan, head of petroleum analysis at Gas Buddy has these three recommendations if you're driving to your destination. Plan ahead, drive during off-peak times, and avoid Friday and Monday afternoon and evening, which typically see the highest traffic volume. And fuel up your tank when you spot cheap gas to avoid paying more at popular tourist spots. Gas prices can fluctuate 20 to 50 cents a gallon simply by crossing a state line. Meanwhile, some airports are bracing for large crowds. Officials from Philadelphia International Airport say they're bracing for their busiest Labor Day since 2019. And travel experts say declining oil prices are leading to lower airfares and higher demand. Certainly an important factor when it comes to airfare. And so this is why I think there are more tailwinds right now when it comes to travel prices than headwinds. The Miami Marlins hoping for a series split take the Tampa Bay Rays to the extra innings here at home. The Marlins activated lifty pitcher Trevor Rogers from a 15-day disabled list to start for the game. And although Rogers played a good game with five strikeouts, it was not enough to keep the Rays from staking into the victory in an extra inning. The final score, Tampa Bay 2, Miami 1. The Marlins hit the road to play the Braves tomorrow at 7.20. A scaly visitor getting a frosty reception at a fast food restaurant. That's still ahead and so is the story. Serena has absolutely made the, probably the biggest impact in the sport. The world is watching as Serena Williams continues her improbable run at the U.S. Open, the final Grand Slam of her remarkable career. Newsbreak will be back in two minutes.
something to feel okay to drive you're not okay to drive don't drive buzzed there are a lot of ways to reach out to a friend about their mental health learn how you can help at seize the awkward.org bill is a family man he invests his money wisely and provides a good life for his children just one problem he often opens emails from senders he doesn't know, and his computer is not password protected. One day, Bill checked his bank account and... 94% of malware attacks originate from emails. Don't be like Bill, take your cybersecurity seriously. There are so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Serena Williams is third round bound in the final Grand Slam tournament of her amazing career. It was a major upset last night as she beat the number two player in the world in front of the largest night session crowd in U.S. Open history. Serena Williams is leaving her final mark. The 40-year-old world champion announced this year's U.S. Open tournament will be her last. Reporter Michelle Morris joins us from our DC Bureau with more on the tennis legend. Serena Williams may be retiring, but her legacy will last a lifetime. We're here at the Southeast Tennis and Learning Center, okay, named that? after the Williams sisters, to bring opportunity to underprivileged youth in the community. The Southeast Tennis and Learning Center isn't the only recreational center providing children with access to learn the sport of tennis in DC. We sat with Prong, director of TGA Premier Tennis of North DC, as she shared her thoughts on the tennis icon. Serena has absolutely made the probably the biggest impact in the sport. She's African-American. She came from a non-common family situation, then became a, one of the best players of all times. So of course, kids gonna look up to him. I looked up to her. I went to her camp when I was little. And like many young, inspiring tennis athletes who look up to Serena, Rising star Coco Guaf reflects on the simple fact of having representation in the sport gave her the confidence that she too could succeed. Growing up, I never thought that I was different because, you know, the number one player in the world was somebody who looked like me. But before she lays down her racket, Serena graced the latest cover of Time magazine, where she discussed her desire to walk away from the sport in order to give her undivided attention to motherhood. This whole journey is going to be emotional. I love what I do. It's nothing about me not loving my job. I love it. I've been playing it my whole entire life. And now, young players are looking to the next generation of tennis stars for inspiration. If you looked into Layla Fernandez, the Canadian um, player, she's only 19 and she's actually our brand ambassador. So I think looking up to her, she is our inspiration for allowing kids to dream. The 23-time Grand Slam champion is scheduled to compete in the U.S. doubles tournament with her sister Venus. In Washington, D.C., reporting for South Florida Media Network, Michelle Morris. The Florida International University Panthers set to be one of the first teams to play on the first big night of college football. As the network's Anya Joseph reports, tonight's home game starts at 7. The fall semester is back, which means college football is here, and the FIU Roaring Panthers are back for their season opener against the Bryant University Bulldogs here at the FIU Football Stadium. They're coming back from a season that felt short of expectations last year, but this season with a new head coach and 48 new players, that's just the start of what's new here at FIU. 
The FIU football team has been rebuilt with only nine returning players. It's coach Mike McIntyre's first game here at FIU. Last year, the Panthers were 1-11 overall, and the two-time national coach of the year has got these Panthers ready to come out the cage, ready to fight for wins this season. I've been really impressed with these guys and what they've done. It's been a great competition, and uh, I feel like we got guys, if one of them went down, I feel very, very confident the next guy could step in and get the job done. FIU students now have a new tailgate area located at the Tamiami Hall Promenade with an easy entrance to Gate 6 where tailgaters are led to their seats. Behind me is the student section where FIU tailgaters will be able to get a sideline view to the end zone during the game. Now the Panthers have just one thing left to do, which is prove doubters wrong right here at the Ricardo Silva Stadium. The, the best part about being last is uh, you, you can't go nowhere but up. So and that's, that's, that's uh, self-explanatory right there. So we just, we just ready to, to just prove them wrong. It's a whole new era and a whole new experience to look forward to here at FIU. Today at 7 p.m. is where it all kicks off. I'm Anya Joseph, South Florida Media Network. A lunch break at a Wendy's in Tampa turned into an alligator match with the cops at the restaurant's parking lot. After workers at a Hernando County Wendy's parking lot discovered a six-foot alligator looking for a bite, sheriff's deputies were forced to wrestle with the gator before taking it into custody yesterday. That's all the time we have for news break. I'm Leanne Abutarbush. I'm Paloma Pimentel. Get more news anytime at sfmn.fiu.edu.